All right. Hey, stop. We're going to continue. So look, our first political parties here are the Federalist Party, the Democratic Republican Party, and the Federalists go away relatively quickly because the Federalists made a couple of really significant mistakes in terms of the Alien and Sedition Acts under Madison's presidency, and, or excuse me, under Adams' presidency. In fact, John Adams is the really only Federalist uh, president, and he only lasted four years. All right. Uh, then we go to the Jacksonian Democrats and the Whigs. The Whigs don't last very long. All right, with uh, the election of uh, Abraham Lincoln in 1860, we get the creation of what we recognize today as the modern Republican Party. Again, not necessarily the same uh, ideologically, but we end up with, in 1860, the Republicans and the Democrats. All right. 1896 marks another turning point. That's the rise of populism in the United States. Historical populism, nothing to do with Trump's populism. Okay? That's the actual creation of a populist party. You should have learned about this back in A-Push last year. That's the Grange and the Farmers Alliance and all that stuff that comes out of industrial, the Industrial Revolution. All right? 1932, we've talked about that as being a turning point in American or in government history. Right, or a term in, in terms of government significantly. Okay? That is the election of uh, FDR and what we really see as a democratic dominance of our government for a considerable amount of time. Really the only, <clears throat> the only real variation in that is Dwight Eisenhower. And to call Eisenhower a Republican Honestly, might be a little bit of a stretch. Not a terrible stretch. He was very moderate, though. He was not, definitely not what you would think of as in terms of a Republican today. That leads us <clears throat> to 1968. Okay? This is what we consider the sixth party system in 1968 until now has been marked by what we call divided government. All right. This is a term you need to understand. Divided government is wildly important. Okay. Divided government is where you have a party, a, one party in the White House, and another party controlling Congress. All right. Obviously, we don't have that right this second. In all honesty, in 2018, we'll probably get back to that. I know Zane doesn't want to hear that. He doesn't believe me, but it's true. I think it'll be That's true. I did not think Trump was going to win. But I didn't really think Clinton was going to win either. Well, no, I, I didn't. I honestly didn't think it would get down to the two of them. And then once it got down to the two of them, I, I'm not going to lie. I was holding out hope that a third party would get some sort of electoral college votes and nobody would get to 270 and we could just have some real fun in this country. <laughs> that wasn't fun enough. That's fun like watching a train wreck, right? <laughs> yeah, you're right. It's really not fun, but you can't stop watching. And, and, and I mean, let's not kid ourselves. And I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the election of Trump. I'm talking about the whole, like, cycle of everything that we got to with the primary debates and, and everything, okay? Um, now, what you will realize, and this is really what we're going to talk about, because so much of this class is current events, or it is sort of politically in the now. Um, what we see in this six-party system, or this era of divided government, and that's probably what I'll refer to it as moving forward, is the era of divided government. We see uh, a lack of importance of political parties, right? Most, I don't want to say most Americans, but a significantly increasing percentage of Americans no longer identify as either Republican or Democrat. In fact, a vast majority, no, no, again, not a vast majority, sorry. I'm speaking in hyperbole, and that's not a good thing. Okay. But again, a significant percentage of Americans see both parties as misrepresenting their ideals or what it is that they want and need. All right? <clears throat> so... With this, this is part of the reason why we get to split ticket voting. This is part of the reason why we get to divided government. Okay, 
Again, just me personally, I'll be 100% honest with you. I think that there are certain positions that Republicans are better suited for. There are other positions that Democrats are better suited for. Okay? I'm not the only one that sort of has that ideology or that mindset, which is why we see this era of divided government. It's also why we see certain states that begin to, um, you'll see certain states that sort of become um, swing states that didn't necessarily exist prior to this point. Okay? And we also see some, some massive sort of shifts in terms of, base voting blocks, right? So when you go back and you look, and I wish my map went back further, okay, but if you go back to like 1980, for instance, Ronald Reagan defeated Jimmy Carter in what's definitively a landslide, not a Trump landslide, but a real landslide, okay, 489 to 49. And that's where he's basically taking, Reagan is taking everything of importance, all right? What happens, okay, and it really begins sort of in the late 60s, okay? The South becomes Republican. We've talked about all of this and those shifts, all right? But I do want you to understand that as sort of the party devolution has occurred, okay, you see voting blocks or groups that do not necessarily seem to always align with, with what you would typically think of, right? Reagan did a very good job in 1980 of mobilizing sort of working class whites, which is typically a Democratic voting bloc. They voted for Reagan. Trump obviously did the exact same thing this election cycle. All right, so you see some of those differences in terms of what's going on. All right, this gives you some statistics so you can at least try to understand this idea of divided government, how it works, how it functions. Okay. Again, you won't see anything on the actual AP test from as recent as 2016. So I do give you some of these statistics that are a little bit older. I mean, I could probably go up to like 2008 at this point. All right. But what we see is in 2000, and this is a significant election because obviously it's the fourth time in the history of the United States that a minority candidate has won. Not meaning that he himself was a minority. Bush is as white as white gets but rather that he received a minority of the vote. Okay? So he did not win the popular vote, still became president of the United States based on the Electoral College. But what you see is a very, very small majority in terms of Congress as well. All right? So they do control the House. They end up not controlling the Senate, though, uh, almost immediately. Now, 2002, they gain more spots than what they had in 2000, but we've talked about that as being an abnormality and a result of 9-11, all right? Uh, when you look state government, okay, we begin to see dominated a little bit more by Republicans. That's still true today. Um, in fact, Zane, you might know what is it, 37 states now have Republican governors or legislatures? It is. Probably close. I, I, think, I think it was 37. Right, which is, which is very significant in terms of um, what you're going to get to. Okay, we're going to stop there in terms of lecture notes for today.